figures at least, I started writing about famous locals based on what people told me. So many actors and comedians seem to come from Streatham or to live here, whatever. Someone I often saw around Streatham was Shaw Taylor, who lived in the high on Streatham High Road. He often walked his Pekingese dog late at night and always enjoyed a chat about football. His catchphrase at the end of his police five slots on ITV was... I'll see you next week until then. Keep them peeling. Perhaps the Streatham celebrity I love best was June Whitfield, born in Streatham Hill in 1925. As a cup reporter, I used to have to cover fates on the field behind the United Reform Church. Those jobs were generally a bit of a fag, but when June was opening them, I could always rely on her for a smile and a quote. At that time, June was best known for radio as S, devoted girlfriend of the hapless Ron in the Glums. Oh, Ron! It was a while before her success in Terry and June, and absolutely fabulous. June featured in the news headlines with Roy Hudd, born in Croydon, but a long time resident of Streatham, lived near Mount Ephraim Road. He always told a good joke. Butcher, I want two pork chops and make them lean. Certainly, sir. Which way? <laughs> <laughs> when I was doing research here in the library in the old days before the internet, I often used to hear the distinctive tones of Derek Guyler, another local resident, before I saw him. Derek's two most famous TV roles are Corky, Eric Sykes' neighbour, and Desert Rock Pat Potter, the caretaker in Please Sir. When your body's been frustrated with a shrapnel like my house, you know, then you can gossip me. Until then, don't make a monkey out of a desert rat. <laughs> and while we're on the subject of distinctive voices, I'll never forget seeing Patricia Hayes in Edna, the inebriate woman. Patricia was born in Streatham and must be long dead now. But even if you've forgotten the play, Jeremy Sanford's lines... Uh, I am not the vagrant. I am not on the tongue, not the vagrant. We'll bring it back. Now, someone I had a soft spot for when I was starting out was Cathy McGowan, presenter of Ready, Steady, Go, and known as Queen of the Mods. Sometimes I glimpsed her shopping at Honey Boutique near Woolworths and Dolce's. She sounds rather flat and stilted now, probably rather like Kate Moss. Here she is explaining what a mod was. It's um, short for modernist, that means extremely dressed person. <laughs> and there are so many others, from C.B. Fry, who refused the throne of Albania, and horror novelist Dennis Weekly, his house was burned down not so long ago. To David J. Hurts, who used to visit his mum's knitwear shop on Leanne Court Road. And who remembers Tommy Trinder? Very popular in his day. Yeah, lucky people. Hey, uh, lucky people. <laughs> yeah, born in Wellfield Road, Tommy lived at Duquesne Court in Fallon for many years. I often used to see him if I had to go to Craven Cottage for any reason. Tommy was chairman of the club from 1959 until 1976. Oh, this needs a bit of updating, doesn't it? <laughs>